Can you give me an example of one of the things that's key about this is where you, you work with clients to impact on service. Can you give us an example of where, from engaging with a client, you've changed some of your service provision as a result of what they've told you? I can take that. We were talking with um, some of the, the uh, ladies in refuge, and they were saying we feel really supported with the services that you have in Cheshire, but I really worry for my child. There's very little um, going on for children to support children. So we worked, um, CDAP worked alongside the NSPCC, and we developed the Jigsaw programme, which is a, a programme that rebuilds self esteem. It brings children together to help them make sense. Uh, of some of their experiences and to give them that hope that they can move on and, and can achieve. So we felt really proud of ourselves. Yes, we've got that in place. And then the mums were saying, well, that's great. We've built self-esteem with some of our children. But sometimes when the perpetrator leaves the household, an adolescent can actually rise to the fore and take over that bullying uh, behaviour and actually intimidate younger siblings. And it was an issue to get children into school, for instance, children wouldn't get up in the morning. Um, so uh, we we worked with Emily Allison, who had been a probation officer, and we actually uh, commissioned her to write the Changing, Process, uh, Changing Places programme, uh, which challenged uh, patterns of abusive behaviours. And we <coughs> researched it very well, doing um, looking at the people's attitudes, the people's attitudes before and post um, the uh, programme, and asking schools and asking uh, the parents, the carers, how that had uh, impacted on the children's lives. And we found that it was it was very very impacting that children were attending school better, they were engaging better, they were having less uh, confrontations with people and six months later that was still achievable um, some of our uh, safeguarding leads in schools were saying that the children's behaviour uh, and literally changed beyond all recognition in some, it sounds a bit twee but that's what they reported back so we felt great we've done that we've got that in place and then we were talking again with mums who so were saying well you've sorted out the adolescents we've got those programmes in probably <coughs> Two thirds of our secondary schools, we've trained learning mentors, we've trained teaching assess, uh, assistants, and and other agencies to run those within schools, and that's a running program. There was nothing then for the, for the primary school children, and sometimes it could be a, a ten year old that's actually inculcating some of those behaviours, and those behaviours needed changing. So we went back to the drawing board, and we actually rewrote those materials again with the help of Emily Allison and others to get a programme that was accessible for primary age and those are now running in four or five of our schools and we've selected those schools where we have high concentrations of children going through multi-agency uh, risk assessment conferencing. So we're actually placing it where there is, is need. So we are listening to service users. Well, the relative size of the issue in Cheshire and how therefore transferable what, what you've learned in Cheshire would be to other areas. So something about the size of the problem and, and what's been what's unique about this partnership that's helped get to the bottom of it, I guess. I suppose the size of the problem, um, if we look at the reported incidents, which is all that we can know about, um, we have about 5,000 reported domestic incidents that police attend in each of the two local authority areas. Um, and we have applied the, the kind of best practice model of MARAC and SD specialist domestic violence courts to that. So that's the kind of way in which the best practice is is being implemented in terms of ensuring that other agencies are aware because they will, although pe police attend incidents, we actually want people to be identifying domestic abuse before it gets to that stage. So we have a level one and level two training program for all staff. We do specialist training on risk assessment. We have, for example, um, trained children's centre staff and their administrative staff because they may be the people who pick up on the issue first of all, rather than somebody actually disclosing they're going to see people coming in distressed, um, perhaps having parenting difficulties at the door of the children's centre. So in addition to all the work that's going on with the schools, we're also branching out into other areas which are deemed to be early intervention and prevention. So we've got our standard training programme, we have bespoke training programmes for, for example, the fire service advocates who have opportunities to be in homes that other people do not have. And we're working very closely with them, particularly around their migrant um, impact funding, which again gives us access to homes that we may not otherwise have. Um, 
in terms of um, um, evidencing that that's making a difference. Our rate of reporting in Cheshire is still rising, and I think that is about rate of reporting rather than domestic abuse being more widespread. Um, but we do also recognise that one of the things we would really love to implement is a very, very widespread, properly embedded community engagement programme, um, which has consistent messages, and I would love to see that. And it is in the Violence Against Women strategy being supported by national initiatives. For example, I come from Northern Ireland and I was watching the final of The X Factor and in the ads in between, there were adverts for responses to sexual violence. And it's that kind of level. I think we need that at national level and for us to be fully informed and to know about it so that at local level, we have the same messages that are in all of our communities in whatever way they can be. Have you seen any um, impact on child protection, referrals, follow-up outcomes as a result of your project? You mentioned Lord Laming and yeah. domestic violence. He's a late convert. But, you know, what <laughs> have you in noticed an impact in what you do on those issues? In terms of, of Marac, we had 383 children in families uh, which were Marac in six months of uh, the previous uh, year. Um, and certainly schools are much, much more aware and are, um, at, at one time you were saying, are there issues for, for children here? No, we've never heard of it, we don't know, you know, it's not happening. But now when we're asking them for information to go forward to the safety planning in, in Marrack, schools are much more aware. So they are having conversations with the children. We've got things like snack and chat at the beginning of the day in a lot of schools for, for um, um, reception children where they, where they disclose. We're doing training uh, with staff to make sure that they have that downtime in school to disclose. So we are getting more disclosures from children via the projects and it's being handled well, but in terms of stats. And I think in terms of the um, children's social care agenda, we have seen a huge, hugely increased engagement. I think in practice, the frontline social workers have always known the connections, um, but the systematising of all the processes has made that those are much, made sure those are much more secure connections than they ever were previously, and that people are not just focusing on the child, but looking at the compromised parenting and involving us 